You can call it wild, you can call it crazy, you can call it outright, downright outrageous, but you can't call it boring. It's dynamic, dazzling, and certainly sizzling supercross racing that can be found only on Moto Video. It's your front row seat to the hottest motorsports events in the nation, and it's all on home video cassette. So sit back, put on your gloves, strap on your helmet, pop it into gear, and prepare yourself for supercross racing action from Moto Video. and the NBA Detroit Pistons, but there'll be no ball play today here on the floor of the Silverdome. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Huffman. Welcome to round six of the AMA Supercross season. And the question is, can Ricky Johnson be stopped? Well, we're gonna find out because Ward and Lachine and all the rest of the AMA Superstars are gonna throw everything they've got to try to stop Ricky Johnson in the factory Honda today. Let's recap the Supercross season thus far. Anaheim Stadium was the first stop of the 1988 season. Though not an AMA-sanctioned event, the racing still proved to be fast and furious, with Honda's Ricky Johnson coming out on top. Round two was held at the first dome stadium ever built, the Houston Astrodome, where Jeff Ward took home the gold and the glory for the fourth straight year. Then it was up to Seattle, where Honda's Ricky Johnson and Wardy's teammate Ron Lachine each split a night of a weekend doubleheader. So the point standings thus far places Ricky Johnson in first, Jeff Ward in second, and Ron Lachine third. And the largest crowd to see a Supercross in the Pontiac Silverdome in almost eight years gets set for the Sunday afternoon showdown between Jeff Ward and Ricky Johnson. And we are moments away from the start of heat number one at the Pontiac Silverdome. One major star in this event and one aging star. Ron Lachine, number four, and Brock Lover, number 44, and a slew of local riders, three-digit riders. These are the local superstars going up against the big guys, and I guess you could call them cannon fodder. Lachine is lined up in the center of the starting gate next to the, uh, the handle releaser to drop the gate. The local riders to watch for, well, they're the whole slew of them. Some of the others to watch for, number 33 there, coming up number in the white, 16-year-old Sean Kalos of Litchfield Park, Arizona. He is a tough, young cookie. Brian Manley, number 30. Out of California. There's number 44, Brock Lover. Number 21, Doug Dubach. And you saw just a moment ago, Ron Lachine. On down the line, number 8, Jeff Stanton, a local Michigan rider, Yamaha factory rider. He's a real superstar, up and coming superstar. 201, Jeff Matasevich, a 125 Kawasaki specialist, now on a 250 in this heat. Let's see what Matasevich can do. He needs some seasoning. There's number 15, uh, Mike Fisher, also on a factory Kawasaki. And we are set to go for heat number one. First five, go to the main event. The gate drops. They rock it down the line. It's going to be Lachine. No, it is not Lachine. Let's check it out. It is number 21, Doug Dubach. And look out, a change. That is 201, Matasevich. Matasevich, they call him Chicken, and that is not an accurate nickname for this kid. He is tough. He's 17 years old out of La Habra, California, number 201, and he is a 125 specialist on the Kawasaki factory team. Dubach goes to the inside, tries to cut off Matasevich. There's uh, Glover, number 44, and third. But it is Matasevich, 17 years old, in front. Doug Dubach in second on the Yamaha. And Glover, number 44 in third, as they go through the whoops. Lachine is in mid-pack. Here's a surprise. Lachine does not get the good start he expected. Matasevich in front, number 201. He is a 125 Supercross specialist. One of the first times that Kawasaki has put him on a 250. Watch him in the green. And now Glover goes into second. Glover, a six-time national champion, and he's a seasoned veteran at the top of the hill, and he puts, he put Matasevich down! Matasevich goes down faster than an Idaho thermometer in January, and Glover takes the lead! Oh, and I know Matasevich is upset about that! Brock Glover rammed him and put him down, Glover stalls! Holy Toledo! And out in front goes Dubak and a slew of other riders in front of Glover, and here comes Lachine on the outside! 
It is Doug Dubach, Yamaha support rider in front. Now Lachine has gone to second. There's number 30, Brian Manley in third on the outside of the Suzuki. But it is, look out, Lachine on the inside. He slams into Dubach and Lachine has taken the lead. Ron Lachine about as subtle as the Israeli army when he's on the gas. And look at this guy go. Dubach on the Yamaha in second. Glover trying to move up in third. But it is Lachine in front as they go up into the stands here in the Silverdome. Then back down to the floor. The most dangerous part of the track right here. A triple jump. Lachine styling it. He's feeling frisky. They launch themselves off that triple jump. They can't see the third jump. It's very dangerous. That's where Johnson crashed the previous year and lost the championship. But here you go, and here comes Glover back again in the wild, garish pink outfit in third. Number 44, Brock Glover. But it is Ron, the machine, Lachine in front. Dubach number 21, second, Glover in third. And number 30, Manley in fourth. Top five, go to the main. Here is Lachine. Look at this guy. He is all alone out in front. Halfway mark out. Jeff Ward says the fastest man on the track is Lachine. When I asked him who's the slowest in one lap, he said Lachine. Means when Lachine runs hot, he's hot. When he's cold, he's cold. Here's Glover, number 44. Brock Glover, six-time national champion, trying to come back, trying to reel in Lachine up there in front. They lap slower riders through the whoops. Glover, big, tough, strong, blonde kid out of El Cajon, California. Scored his first national championship when he was 17. Here's Dubach, number 21. Dubach and Glover. Trying to move up on Lachine. And that is, I believe, Fisher right behind Dubach, right out of our sight. But it is Lachine in front, then Glover, then Dubach. There's Lachine. Ron, the machine, Lachine out in front, lapping riders. This kid is on. He's awesome. Up the uphill. Doesn't scare Lachine at all. Back down to the bottom. Sets up for the triple. Cannot see the third jump. Here he goes. Whoa! He waves to the crowd. And Dubach! Dubak passes Glover. Oh, and Glover and Dubak are battling just out of our sight. Fisher also, but here is Lachine in front. Ron the Machine. They call him the big man on a factory Kawasaki, the final year of his three-year contract with Kawasaki. And this guy has had more ups and downs than an Otis elevator operator. He goes through the tunnel. Glover in front. Dubak in second spot. Glover and Fisher battling back in the pack. Here's some mid-pack action. There's Dubak moving up. Lapping slower riders, not exactly mid-pack. Dubak is running in second. Fisher now is in third. Glover is in fourth spot. And Lachine is out in front. Pontiac Silverdome, the dirt, the rut starting to build up now. It's this real soft dirt. It's been frozen and suddenly thawed out inside this stadium, and the ruts are starting to develop. Lachine over the whoops, over the triples, now through the whoops. The suspension on these new motocross bikes. Technology is so incredible. They've improved so much over the past few years. Lachine in front, Dubach in second, Glover battling Fisher for third. But right now the crowd is watching Ron Lachine give everybody a riding lesson. One of the few tracks with an over and under bridge. A tunnel through the bottom and a bridge over the top. It's a Pontiac trademark. They've done that for the past 10 years. Checkered flag out and Ron the Machine Lachine takes it. Lachine first, easy win. Dubak is second. Brock Glover third. Mike Fisher fourth. Matasevich, after crashing, gets back up and finishes in fifth spot, and he transfers to the main event. Not a bad showing for Brock Glover. He looked pretty good. Let's go down to the victory circle. Ron, I was looking at the riders up front. Matasevich and Glover having a heck of a duel. All of a sudden, there you were. Yeah, well, I kind of snuck up from behind on them guys, and uh, they were kind of floundering around there with each other, and I tried to just sneak by them before they even knew I was there, and uh, it worked. <laughs> I guess it did. Uh, then you got out in front. Did you relax the pace, or were you pushing all the way? I kind of relaxed it there a little bit after Brock, uh, you know, kind of dropped off the pace. I just tried to stay smooth, and uh, I was still thinking about trying to get the fastest heat, and... Uh, just trying to put it together. When you have a lead and you know you're not being pressured or pushed, is it an opportunity for you to look the track over or, you know, what runs through your mind? Well, it's an opportunity just to relax, basically. Look the track over, find some new lines, play around a little bit on the jumps for the fans, and uh, basically that's about it. And I heard some cheers over there on the triple and from different parts, so evidently you were playing around. Yeah, I was trying to.
Well, you did a great job. You're one of the better aerial uh, maneuvering acts, I guess, in motocross today. Well, thanks a lot, Larry. Ron Lachine, ladies and gentlemen, he won heat race number one. He's looking forward to, I think, Ron, a victory tonight. Yeah, Sundays are usually my day. I like the double nighters. Last year here, uh, you know, I won the second day, and then also in Seattle this year on the second day. So I think uh, some works for me on that day. Good luck to Ron Lachine, and we'll go back upstairs to the voice of Supergross, Larry Huffman. It's all yours. Thank you very much, Larry Myers, and we go down to heat number two, and there's Jeff Ward, Lachine's teammate, lining up in the exact same position as Lachine did in the first heat. Next to him, number nine, Eric Keo. Here we go with heat number two from the Silverdome. Blasting out of the gate, launched like Exocet missiles. It is number one, Wardy. Jeff Ward, an excellent gator, gets out in front, but look at him, right on his back tire is number nine, and that's Eric Keo on the Suzuki. Wardy rounds the top of the uphill, then comes back down to the bottom. Over the triple jumps, just as smooth as a mayonnaise sandwich. Keo in second, there's number 23, Tischer, the 125 East Coast champion from uh, the previous year, Supercross champion. Also on a factory Suzuki. Tischer moved up by Suzuki to the 250 class. That's number 23 in third. It is Ward, number one, then Keo, number nine, then Tischer, number 23, and then Bowen coming up on the outside. He is right behind number 18, Fred Andrews. That's a top five. Wardy looking awfully good. You'll not find a rider in better physical condition than Jeff Ward. He half squats 435 pounds, runs bicycles daily. He is in incredible physical shape. Has got raw riding talent and a lot of years of experience. Came over from Scotland as a mere baby. His father, Jack Ward, and very lovely mother brought him over when, they were, when he was just a, a little baby. And he started riding mini bikes at age five, Jeff Ward. Mid-20s now, has got over 20 years' experience on a motorcycle and a, a slew of national mini-cycle championships, as well as two Supercross championships. Wardy in front, number nine, uh, Keogh in second, and still Tishner, number 23 in third. Eric Keogh, number nine, won the 125 USGP last year, the highlight of his career. And he is the great yellow hope for Suzuki along with Johnny O'Mara, but O'Mara is, his fortunes are waning, not looking that good this year in Supercross. And this lad is number nine, Keel. Short squat, big arms, well-developed shoulders, and, and very, very strong legs, which is what you need in Supercross. Riding the 1988 RM250, developed by Hannah, and it's a rocket ship. But right now, he can't quite reel in Wardy. Keel, Granada Hills, California, born and bred in Southern California, out in front. Early 20s. Got a long career ahead of him. Here's Wardy lapping other riders through the whoops. Those whoops don't look dangerous, but they are. There's second place, number nine, Keo, number 23, Tishner in third. Bowen and Andrews battling for fourth spot at this point. Jeff Ward, a millionaire, with his contract with Kawasaki. Looks down at the bike, but no problems. Still on the gas. Wardy building a big house down in San Clemente. We flew out with him out here to Pontiac, and... They've just uh, broken ground on the house. It's so big, it looks like the Holiday Inn. He's building a big one, a garage that's bigger than my house to hold all his toys. Porsche, Turbo, and a slew of motorcycles. Jeff Ward, number one on the factory, Kawasaki. Gave Kawasaki their second Supercross championship in the last three years. Rips off a tear-off. Having no problems at all, but you can see the ruts developing in this track here. Wardy has got the rhythm. They say when you've got the rhythm for the whoops, everything just works perfectly. And there's Keo, and that gives you an idea of how far ahead Wardy is in this short heat race here at the Pontiac Silverdome ahead of Keo. Bowen and Andrews battling for fourth spot. Jeff Hicks right behind him. But it is Wardy's race all the way, looking to give Kawasaki a one-two sweep. And now Wardy is waving at the crowd. I don't see that very often. Wardy turns and waves to the crowd. They respond to him. They love to see him. Here's second place Keo trying now to reel in Wardy. There are no points for winning a heat race unlike previous years. So Keo has got himself assured a ride in the main event. Keo, watch the way he goes through the whoops. Gets the rhythm, gets the front wheel up, skimming across the jump in front. Comes back around and gasses the RM250. Eric Keo looked, has looked awfully strong in the 125 class the last few years, but has not yet taken a title. Wardy, the white flag. One lap to go for Jeff the Flying Freckle Ward. He's not crazy about that nickname. Pulls that front wheel up in the air and puts the power to the ground. 
lapping the three-digit riders, the local riders, but that gives them a chance to watch a champion in action and race against him, watch his lines. They'll try to stay with him for a little bit. Here's Keo, number nine, firmly entrenched in second spot with Tishner in third. Keo, a little bit taller than Jeff Ward. Rider there on the side, number 89, Brary, Gary Bronowski with a broken bike. Jeff Ward heading for the checkered flag. No problems at all. Has led it every foot of this heat race. Wardy, he's having fun too. The rhythm through the whoops. Into the tunnel and out of the tunnel. Heading for the checkered flag here in the Pontiac Silverdome. Wardy's not, let, not letting up a bit. Checkered flag and Wardy. Both feet off the pegs. Showboating for the crowd. Takes home the bacon. Jeff Ward, he's happy. Woo. So Ward wins the second heat. Keo is second on the Suzuki. Tishner third, also on a Suzuki. Keith Bowen on the tough racing Kawasaki in fourth. And Fred Andrews on a privateer Honda in fifth spot. Let's go down to Victory Circle and Larry Myers. The major hurdle is over. You've got a good pick on the gate for the final event tonight. And uh, the only thing you have to do, different than you did last night, was not make a mistake once you get the lead. Yeah, that's, that's racing, Larry. No, no mistakes, but uh, we're only human. We do make them, and I made a big one last night. And i try to do it here tonight. Good luck to you, partner. Thank you. Jeff Warren, ladies and gentlemen, from Mission Viejo, California, Team Kawasaki. He won one of the events here in 1987. He's looking forward to doing just that a little bit later this afternoon. And we'll go back upstairs to Larry Huffman. Thank you, Larry Myers, and this could be an interesting heat. Heat number three here in Pontiac, Ricky Johnson number two, George Holland three, Jeff Leach number seven. Let's watch these guys. Here's the start. Down that long straightaway. There's Johnson number two coming out from the inside out of nowhere, but it is Schmidt. Donnie Schmidt, number 16, and he loses it. Schmidt had the lead, and Johnson uncharacteristically goes out in front early. Johnson is not a good gator, does not get the starts, but this time he came out swinging. So it is Johnson in front. Whoa, Schmidt landed hard. Schmidt in second spot. Number seven, Jeff Leese, the Australian champion, also on the Honda in third. And there is Holland, who cut Schmidt off. Is there a cop here in the Silver Dome? He should be arrested for grand larceny. He took that right away from Donnie Schmidt. Holland, George Holland. So it is Ricky Johnson in front of the factory Honda. And number three, Holland in second, least number seven, third. And Donnie Schmidt right behind them, number 16 in fourth. And 17, Ross Rollerball Peterson, the Canadian, in fifth. So Ricky Johnson in front. Holland second, the perennial bridesmaid in the 125 class. Ricky Johnson in front. Larry Huffman calling the action from the Pontiac Silverdome. Good action it is, too. Johnson goes way up to the top. Here's Holland. Holland running right about, uh, well, he's batting Lease for second, actually, at this point, and he's got second. So Holland goes into second spot ahead of Lease. George Holland, perennial bridesmaid, as I said, second and third in the 125 class the last two years with on a Suzuki, and they kept thinking he's going to win the championship, but Mickey Diamond won it. I took it away from him. Here's Johnson through the whoops. Look at the, again, look at the rhythm. The big man, Johnson, he's well over six foot one. Very good shape. Likes to surf when he's not racing. And he will make, according to motocross action, over $1 million this year. Ricky Johnson, number two. Ain't bad for racing a motorcycle. Donnie Schmidt still in fourth spot. There's Johnson lapping the riders here at the Pontiac Silverdome. When he feels cocky, he will turn and wave to the crowd when he feels he's got a big enough lead. And the crowd responds. They know they've seen him do this. He's a great showman. But a lot of ruts are developing. I don't know. He may be having some problem with the landing on those. This track is starting to break down now. John Savitsky built and designed it, and normally he does an excellent job, but he can only do it as good, build it as good as the dirt is. Look at those ruts. I think I just saw a German soldier stick his head out of one of them. Ricky Johnson, number two, lapping the slower riders. Number three, Holland, and second Holland from Northern California, Kerman, California. Got married about four months prior to this race. It says nothing's changed. It's the same. I'm happy. Big kid, farm kid from Kerman, California. George Holland in second. That flag is to indicate to a rider he is being lapped to move over before he gets run over. There's Schmidt, still in fourth spot. There's number seven, Jeff Leesk in third. Australian national champion, won everything in Australia, got tired of winning down there, came up here, signed with Yamaha, now signed with Honda. Red hair and freckles, Jeff Leesk, Crocodile Dundee of Supercross Racing. So Honda with three factory riders in this heat, and they are running one, two, three. Johnson, Holland, Leesk, it don't get no better than that. And look at the lead that Johnson is building up in this heat. Look at that. He's as alone as Jimmy Swagger. Look at the lead. Second spot, Holland, number three, and Lee's back in, in third spot, number seven, and still Donnie Schmidt holding on for fourth. Johnson, that CR250 is a rocket ship. 
He rides it so well. Formerly with Yamaha. Signed with Honda a few years back. And boy, he has given him the national championships. But he lost the Supercross Championship to Ward last year. After crashing right here at Pontiac one year ago. No, no crashing now. Johnson looks completely in control. No problems at all. Over the triples. Into the whoops. you got to watch out for the lower or the higher digit riders, the three number riders, because they can put you on your head. They're not used to racing with riders of Johnson's caliber. Ricky Johnson picking his way through the track, getting some track time, checking out different lines, no problems at all. On the gas all the way, not letting up at all. Puts himself between the two riders as he goes into the turn and comes out right between them, splits them. Looking for the white flag. Ricky Johnson, second place, Holland holding on to second, number three. Finished third in the Supercross standings last year and least, number seven. And there is Schmidt, the lone Suzuki rider in fourth spot. But what can you say about Ricky Johnson? He comes, he sees, and he conquers most of the time. He's lost a couple Supercross races this year to Ward and Lachine. And he's determined to win here in the Pontiac Silverdome. The million dollar baby for Team Honda, Ricky Johnson. There's number three, Holland, in second spot, picking his way through the pack. Another very physical rider, incredibly good physical condition. And you have to be to ride Supercross. Your shoulders and arms and legs take a tremendous pounding. White flag, one lap to go for Johnson. Not much happening back in the pack. It's, uh, it's the Ricky Johnson show up in front. Holland in second, Leask in third, as they've been since the first lap. Since they passed Schmidt. Johnson down to the bottom of the long hill. Here's the triple. Let's see if he waves to the crowd. Yes, he does. He gets on the high side. The crowd responds. Oh, that's dangerous. You wonder, jumping off a three-story building, turning and waving to the fans as you're going down. I mean, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> George Holland in second, number three. John Holland doesn't go into theatrics. He just does his job. He's a journeyman rider looking for a championship for Honda. Just first year of his Honda contract. Johnson through the tunnel in an uneventful heat, except for a little passing action in front with Schmidt. But it's Ricky Johnson all the way. And there's a checkered. Ricky gets a little sideways and takes it. Rick Johnson first, Holland second, Lee's third, Honda sweep. Schmidt is fourth, and Dean Matson on a Suzuki finishes fifth. So Ricky Johnson decimates the competition in the Honda sweep in this final heat. Let's go down to Victory Circle and see what Ricky has to say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what can you say except showtime? <laughs> Rick Johnson, the bad boy, making some bad moves, I might say. Yeah, I just out having a good time. I uh, planned my start really well. I got over the gate really good. I made it in the first turn clean. So I figured since I was out in front by myself, I might as well give the people that sit by the triples a show. So I hope they liked it. <laughs> Evidently, RJ, you just don't like splitting that check. Yeah, I don't like $250. It doesn't sound right. I like $500 better. <laughs> but you never know. Maybe they like to just cross up over the finish line better. You, you never can tell. What about the uh, track? Uh, do you feel it's any different than it was last night? We've had a, a lot of motorcycles, a lot of four-wheelers last night running on it. And it looks to me like it's a little bit drier. So, number one, is it any different? Number two, how will it affect the riding today? Well, Larry, it's really similar to what it was like yesterday. A lot of the stuff on top is getting dry and a little bit dusty. You can see the watering on certain spots. But uh, underneath that is still really wet dirt, and it's getting a lot of grooves. But all in all, it's still a motocross track the way I like to ride it. And uh, I just got to go out and give it all I got. It's the same for me as it is for everybody else. Enough said, partner. I want to wish you best of luck in the main event. Thanks a lot. And I'd like to thank all you people for screaming, man. The more you guys yell, the more we'll perform for you. So keep up the good work. Party will be at Rick Johnson's house immediately following this race in, in California. We're back up to you, Larry Huffman. Thank you, Larry Myers. And that gives you an idea why Ricky Johnson is so popular with his crowd. He is a, a master at work in the crowd. A little different type of a race now. These are the 60cc minis. And these kids are all 9 to 11 years old, mounted on 60cc motocross bikes. And this is a thrill for them to race in front of a crowd like this at the Pontiac Silverdome. Look at these guys. Talk about race faces. They've got them. <laughs> 9 to 11 years old. The top local young riders. The up-and-coming Rick Johnsons of tomorrow. And they'll race two laps around this Pontiac Silverdome course. The same course as the big guys. 
Boy, talk about tension and talk about pressure. Well, we'll see what they can do. All of them 9 years old to 11 years old. The final race. There's a real heavyweight. That guy's dad is a real heavyweight. So, the mini bikes, the mini little KXs and YZs, 60cc limit. Let's see what they can do. Two laps, the same course as the pros use. Larry Huffman caught on the action for you here at the Pontiac Silverdome. Larry Myers down to the field, and here we go with the 60cc class. And they rock it out in front down that long, long straightaway. A couple riders crashing there off the line. One or two getting hung up on the starting gate. And there's your leader. Whoa, almost going down. No, there's your leader. That is number 600, Matt Maxima, Bright, Michigan, in front, down the downhill. Sets up for the triple. There's a rider. There's a bunch of riders there dropping down. They don't go that fast, but this track is hard. Matt Maximuth out in front. Look at the two different lines these guys are taking. The crowd loves it. There's Maximuth, number 600. Number 202 is Craig Cunningham. Cunningham trying to keep Maximuth in sight. It is only a two-lap race. Maximum looking like the big guys, but boy, those ruts get deep. When you got a little tiny bike like that, 60 cc, two-stroke, very sophisticated suspension. 16. That's John Kidd in third. So Maximuth, Craig Cunningham, number 202 in second, and John Kidd in third. All local riders from the Pontiac area. White flag out. One lap to go, and Maximuth is on the gas. As we said, incredibly sophisticated machines, single shocks. Look at this. Full-on suspension, five-speed transmissions, and they are little rocket ships. Look at this kid go, going up the uphill. He don't slow down at all. Around the top of the uphill, then back down to the bottom. You can see the ruts there starting to develop. There's second place, Craig the Animal Cunningham, trying to reel in Maximus, and John Kidd, number 016, and throw! And that's a kid land so hard, he jarred his ancestors. Through the whoops. The final lap of a two-lap moto. Nine to 11-year-old 60cc Warriors. There's your leader, 600 Mac Maximuth, Wright, Michigan. There's second spot, number 202, Craig Cunningham. And these guys are the superstars of tomorrow. And that's Cunningham lapping a rider who got tangled up earlier and is still on the previous lap. Through the tunnel, we're in the final lap. Matt Maximoth heading for the checkered flag. Cunningham keeping the pressure on, but just not enough time. As Matt Maximoth, Bright Michigan, takes the checkered flag. Let's go down to Victory Circle and Larry Myers. Larry? Well, with me, Matt Maximoth, the young man that uh, put on such a great display of riding skills out here just a few moments ago. Max, this, that's a pretty, this is a pretty big win for you, isn't it? Yeah, because I didn't win it last year, and I got second, but... This is a good race. How about tonight? Did the guys behind you give you any competition at all? Yeah, the, I didn't know they were going to be behind me that long. It sort of scared me a little bit, but... That's where, that's where you want them, isn't it? Behind you? Yeah, but I want them a little bit further. Oh, a little bit further behind you. <laughs> you know, yesterday we had a 50cc race out here, and we had a young man that we talked to about his girlfriends. Now, do you have any of those? I used to. I don't have any right now. <laughs> what happened to her? You broke up. <laughs> now, how old are you? Eleven. Here's an eleven-year-old man who has already gone through one girl. Why did you break up with her? I don't know. It was her idea. She wanted to break up. Well, I'll bet now that you're a winner that she'd like to have you back. <laughs> I don't know. Let me ask you, would you rather have her back or give up your motorcycle? Which, which would you rather have, your motorcycle or her? My motorcycle. All right, if she was here right now, would you rather have a kiss from her or the trophy that you're going to win? Probably trophy. <laughs> you want the trophy? <laughs> okay. There you are. What do you think about that? I like it. What is that girlfriend's name? Uh, or the ex-girlfriend's name? Janet Ellsworth. Janet, do you think she's out here today? No, she's not. Well, you be sure to call her when you get home and tell her what she missed. Okay. Okay, congratulations. It was a great ride, young man. Hey, thanks. Incidentally, who is your favorite rider? Probably Rick Johnson. Rick Johnson? Okay, you did a good job. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Matt, 
Maximoff, and uh, he's got the right approach to life, I think, right now. We'll talk to him again in a few years at one of these winter ceremonies, and we'll see if he'll take the kiss or the trophy. And we'll go back upstairs. All right, Larry Myers, thank you very much. And now we go to the race the crowd has paid their money for. The 250 main event here at the Pontiac Silverdome. And there's your riders, all the superstars. Number 44, Brock Lover. You wonder what's going through his mind. Coming back after two years, last year of a Yamaha contract. There's number four, Ron Lachine. Gets off the bike. Number nine, Eric Kehoe, who's long overdue for a Supercross win. There's number three, George Holland. And Holland has also yet is also yet to be a winner in a Supercross. He's not yet won one. Talk about gunfighter eyes. Ricky Johnson, look at the concentration on this young man's face. And his nemesis, Jeff Ward. And Ward, right now, I flat guarantee, is wondering, can I beat Johnson in this main event? That is what is going through Jeff Ward's mind right now. All right, we are set to go for the main event. The 1988 Pontiac Supercross. Larry Huffman caught on the action. And get set, get your seatbelts fastened, because here we go. A long, long straightaway. There's Jeff Ward in the center. Has he got the lead? No. Dubak on the Yamaha comes out on the outside. And Ward is second. They go up the uphill. Ward sneaks to the inside. Dubak shuts the door. Now Ward takes it back. And Dubak is right at his back tire. Back down to the bottom of the, flo the floor. Over the triple jump. Jeff Ward in front. That's number 23, Ronnie Tishner in third on the Suzuki. Ward, Kawasaki, Dubak, Yamaha, and Tishner, Suzuki. And there is Johnson back in about uh, fourth spot. And battling. Jeff Ward in front, number one. Then Doug Dubach, number 21. And a slew of riders coming up strong. There's Johnson on the inside, number two. There's Lease, number seven. Holland, number three. And there's Johnson trying to get around, number 23, Tishner, for, th for third. Jeff Ward trying to open up as much of a lead as he can. He knows Johnson's behind him. He knows this man, number two, is moving up. Johnson in fourth spot, trying to get a shot at Tishner. They go up the uphill, then John, and Ward goes down the downhill. Into the triple jumps, no showboating, no waving to the crowd now. These guys are serious. Johnson in fourth spot, going after Tishner. There is Ward, your leader. Jeff Ward in front. Looking behind him, there's number 21, Dubach. There's number 23, Tischer, and here comes Johnson, right in front of Lachine. That could be an interesting battle. Johnson, number two, is in fourth spot. Wardy, National Supercross champion number one, in front. Whoa, look at them drop down and slam into that hard Pontiac ground. Wardy is all serious now. There goes Johnson trying to go in front of Dubach, and he's got Dubach. And suddenly it is Johnson going after Ward. Oh, baby. Hold on. Jeez Louise. Ward in front, as we have seen so many times so far this year, and this man in second, and this is when it gets exciting because Johnson starts reeling in Ward. Now, Ward normally will let Johnson, finally let Johnson by, and then back off and give Johnson the victory. Is it going to be different today at Pontiac? We're about to find out. There's Ward, and there comes Johnson. Lachine, number four, has gone into third spot. Dubach in fourth. Through the tunnel. Wardy in front. The fans are leaning a little bit toward Johnson here, but Jeff Ward has got a lot of fans. He won here a year ago on Saturday night at Pontiac. Johnson crashed, broke his finger, and was out of the championship. He came back, but he could never reel Ward in and overcome his points lead that he picked up here at Pontiac. And Wardy knows that. He's a superb tactician. He knows the point standings. He knows what he's got to do to stay in front of Johnson. Johnson in second spot, number two, over the triple. All serious, no showboating, no waving to the crowd. Uh-uh, Johnson wants Ward. He's coming on to him. Here's Jeff Ward over the, the double jump. Johnson coming right after him, coming at him and hammered him. Johnson wants Ward to make a mistake. Lachine in third. He's always a question mark. When Lachine wants to go for it, he can. But when he doesn't, he is the slowest rider on the track. And Lachine is currently in third spot. Here's Ward, number one, over the course finish line jump. And there's Johnson. And you can see the, the lead is shrinking. And Ward's life is suddenly about to become more complicated. Jeff Ward in front of a big crowd here at the Pontiac Silverdome on a Sunday afternoon. Larry Huffman caught on the action. Looks around behind him, and there comes Johnson. That red Honda, the CR two-wheel rocket ship, coming after Ward on the KX Kawasaki. 
in the middle of the main event here at the Pontiac Silverdome. The home of the Detroit Lions and the Pistons. But it is rock and roll racing today. The best riders in the world. Johnson and Ward were, on, were teammates on the 1987 Motocross to Nations team. And Bob Hanna made up the third of that team. But right now they are adversaries, deadly adversaries, and it is ask no quarter and give no quarter. Coming into lap traffic already. Johnson trying to reel in Ward. Johnson and Ward, a more dissimilar stature pair of riders you could not find. Johnson well over 6'1". Ward about 5'7". Short squat, squat, real muscular, extremely muscular, very, very strong is Wardy. And Johnson long and lean with very little body fat. Also an incredible physical shape. Some would say that Ward has the edge in physical conditioning over Johnson. No, no, that's true. Johnson's pretty strong. There is Johnson reeling him in now. Look at the ruts developing. That could be a factor in this race. Johnson coming in on Ward. Wardy knows now. He's got the signal from his mechanic that Johnson is closing. He's got to open up the lead. And the momentum is carrying away from the rest of the pack. Lachine in third, but he's way, way back. Oh, Johnson almost goes down. That's a surprise. Johnson does not make mistakes. Are we going to see more mistakes from Johnson because he hit the ground? The fork's compressed, and he almost went down. In fact, a lesser rider would have gone down. Wardy is smooth as silk. This kid is, has got it together. No mistakes so far. Coming into traffic. There's Johnson right behind him. You can see him. They go down the downhill. Setting up that very, very dangerous triple. Wardy smooth. A little wobbling there on the jump. Possibly the ruts. Johnson indicated earlier the ruts are becoming a problem when, when talking to Larry Myers. There's Ron Lachine, number four, back in third spot, but all alone in third. Here's Wardy. They, they lap number 16. That's Donnie Schmidt who was a factor earlier, but now Schmidt is down a full lap. That gives you an idea of how fast these guys are going. Johnson goes to the inside. Here is a pass. No, Ward says no. Over the big jump, Johnson comes back in again, and Ward shuts the door again. This normally doesn't happen. Here's Johnson on the inside. He positions himself perfectly, and Johnson goes, goes in front. Now, will Ward back off as he's done before and let Johnson run away with the race? It doesn't look like it. Jeff Ward is hammering Johnson. Down the downhill. The triple jump, Johnson and Ward. Wardy wobbling a little. Those ruts are starting to be a factor. Look at the crowd, wave them on. The ruts are definitely starting to be a factor in this race. Ward going wide. Look at him wave on Wardy. The, the, tr the crew, the, the track crew waving on Jeff Ward. Go after Johnson. Into the tunnel. They lap number another rider, number 11, Keith Bowen. And it is Johnson in front, but Wardy is not letting him pull away. And this is what, what Ward's got to do. He's got to keep the pressure on Johnson and get him to make a mistake. And Johnson is wobbling. He is rocking and rolling like a drunken sailor. Lands in those ruts, and suddenly the, the, the bar starts shaking, and Johnson almost goes down. I don't think he can be getting tired. Let's see. He looks around, and there's Wardy right behind him. Ricky Johnson, no showboating, no waving to the crowd now. He is deadly serious. And also, it, could it be a problem with the bike? There's Ward in second spot. No problems. One little wobble there on one of the jumps. Hammered him, but he's, he's upright. No problems at all. On the KX250 Kawasaki. Jeff Ward trying to keep the pressure on Johnson. That's what he's got to do. There's Johnson, there's Ward, and there's a lot of traffic. That could be a factor. They go by number 30, Brian Manley out of Southern California. And the crowd's attention is focused on Johnson and Ward. Normally, when Johnson gets out in front, he'll start showboating and waving to the crowd. You notice he is not doing that because he knows Ward is serious. Ward is not falling off the pace. Here's Johnson, lapping number 18. Fred Andrews, and here's Ward, number one, still in second spot, but still keeping Johnson in range. Down that downhill, they go up into the stands. They lay plywood and then dirt on top of it and go way up into the stands of the Silver Dome. And there, by the time they hit the bottom of that, they are flying. Ricky Johnson, number two, starting to pull out a lead now. A little bit of a lead. Is Wardy going to give up the ghost and fall back? He's got to keep the pressure on Johnson. There's a lap rider between them. Wardy, you got to get on the gas. You got to hammer him. And Wardy's mechanic and the team manager there. Oh, and Johnson has gone down. Johnson has gone down out of our sight into the hay bale. And Ward takes the lead. Ladies and gentlemen, mark that down. You don't see that often. Ricky Johnson make a mistake, but he was wobbling earlier, and he went down fast. And now it is Jeff Ward's chance to pull away from Johnson. The crowd here at Pontiac are getting their money's worth. 
as Ricky Johnson goes down and gives the lead to Ward. And Ward suddenly has a new lease on life, but look at Johnson come up on him. And now Wardy will try to block Johnson. Johnson slams into the ground again and wobbles. He can't afford to make another mistake. He goes to the inside and goes down again. Whoa, Nelly. Ricky Johnson has crashed twice in a main event, and Jeff Ward is on his way to victory here at Pontiac. But still, plenty of time left, and Johnson cannot afford another mistake. He has gone down twice while leading. That doesn't happen, but once in a blue moon. And Jeff Ward is in front and on the gas. Now, Johnson has got to not only reel him in, he's got to pass him and stay in front. Johnson's self-confidence has got to be shaken. He's never fallen twice in a main and come back and won before. But the crowd here at Pontiac is getting their money's worth. There's Wardy setting up for the triples. All business. And there's Johnson. You can see him wobbling in the back. The ruts developing, getting deeper. Definitely a factor here at the Pontiac Silverdome. John Savitsky built the track. Look at him wave on Ward. But he can't. He can only do as good as he can with the dirt. And the dirt is soft. It is not hard at all. It's soft. The rut's developing. There's Johnson right behind number 46, Dean Matson. Ward laps Matson, and Johnson's going after him. Ricky Johnson going after his nemesis, Jeff Ward, and now he's got Joe Ward in sight. Can Ward hold him off, or will Ward fade? Ward has had the lead handed to him twice on a silver platter, and he knows that. What is Ward going to do? Left Johnson to the inside, almost takes it, and Ward says no. Ward sets up. He's got to go back to the inside for the next jump. And Johnson goes to the outside. They are neck and neck, handlebar to handlebar. Ward and Johnson, and Johnson's got the lead again. For the third time this main event, Ricky Johnson has taken the lead. Will he fall again? Honda is hoping not. Look at Ward. Ward comes back in and forces Johnson into the outside. Ward is suddenly has got the lead and goes into, the, into our cameraman. Ward is driven to the outside by Ricky Johnson and goes down. Oh, and Jeff Ward is mad. He is incensed. They tangled and Ward got the worst of it and went right up into the hay bales and Ricky Johnson is out in front. And Ward is down about 20 seconds. What a shocker. The white flag out, the final lap. And Johnson is on his way to victory. Starting to style a little bit now. I wouldn't do that, Ricky. You've crashed twice and almost went down a third time when you tangle with Ward. Jeff Ward in second spot, very unhappy about that. He's ahead of Lachine, his teammate, for second. But he wanted to win this one at Pontiac. And instead, it's going to go to this one if he can hold on for about another 15 seconds. Ricky Johnson, Team Honda. Look at the fans and the, the field people wave on Johnson. He's got it. Ricky Johnson takes the victory after crashing twice and putting war to the hay bales. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Motorcycle Demolition Derby. So the final results at Pontiac. Ricky Johnson takes it again for Honda. Ward in second. Lachine will settle for third. Eric Kehoe fourth. And Doug Dubach, the Yamaha Privateer, in fifth. In sixth spot, Tishner, then Glover. Then George Holland, Mike Fisher, and Jeff Matasevich rounds out the top ten. Exciting action. Let's go down to Victory Circle and Larry Myers. Well, you did a good job. The track got awfully rough out there, and traffic was a definite problem. Yeah, I was having lots of trouble with lap riders. Uh, you know, they were, uh, weren't watching the blue flag too well, and it kind of was hampering me at the end of the race, but still pulled it off. Same three riders in the winner's circle, same three positions. Jeff, what can you say? That yeah, was a tough race. Uh, I was riding pretty smooth there, but made a few mistakes. And I fell like when I was behind Ricky, but then he fell too. So it was tough. It was tough. There's no, there's no two ways about it. It was tough, and it was one of the better races you're ever going to see. And again, that thing called momentum, it, it uh, just, it, it was a catcher-upper, I guess. Yeah, well, he caught me, and I wasn't too worried about it because I felt smooth, and I was just going to kind of see how he was riding. And, uh, we got alongside each other, he got by, and then again he fell, and he was riding really well, and then uh, we were kind of both out of control going through the stutter bumps there, and he kind of had the advantage because he was on the inside and put me through the hay bales. 
Well, Jeff, it was a great ride. Let me ask you this. Do you feel that you could have gone shoe on the other foot and you were doing the catching up? Was there any way you could have, have rung another tenth or two tenths out of that uh, motorcycle of yours, of, you know, a tenth or two tenths of a, of a lap faster? No, I was riding to the ability that uh, I usually do. He had some good lines and he caught up to me. Like, you know, it's, he was charging hard to catch me. And then uh, once he got in front, I slid out in a corner and he gave him a little gap. But as soon as after I did that, he went down and got ahead of him. But he was charging hard. Don't go away, Jeff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's our winner. What can you say? There's only one word to describe it. RJ, it was awesome. Yahoo! <laughs> Man, it felt good. Uh, I got the lead. I pulled up a good, you know, had a good, comfortable lead. I had some trouble with lappers and I ended up crashing. And then... Uh, Jeff got by me, I caught up to him and I crashed again and I just, I was a little bit tired out there, I was hyperventilating, I wasn't concentrating on my breathing and it showed because I was riding really tight and making a lot of mistakes and then Jeff came up right behind me, went for the pass on the inside right before the whoops and I, I went outside, we were side by side going through the whoops and I just sort of pushed him out, you know. I think. Uh, I don't know. I think I would have played it a little bit different if I was in his shoes, but he did what he thought was right, but I won. So, Ricky Johnson makes it four in a row and serves notice to everybody else. He is the force to be reckoned with. Next, the Supercross circuit moves to Texas Stadium in Dallas for more exciting racing action. I'm Larry Huffman. Thanks for joining us.